Okay guys, thanks for cluing in to part two to the how to draw a Skeletor video. Um, we're gonna go ahead and draw all of Skeletor now. The, uh, by the way, uh, what I'm using and what I like to use is a soft number two, regular number two pencil, works fine for me. Um, I used to use tons of different types of pencils, but I don't really need to. I don't think anybody really does, to be honest with you. If you're just doing sketches, and, and especially if you plan to ink your sketch or scan your sketch in and uh, uh, continue it in Photoshop. Um, for a, a finished pencil piece, yes, then use different gradients. But for our purposes, a number two works great. Also, uh, this is <clears throat> 11 by 17 uh, uh, cardstock from Office Depot. And this works great for me. This works better than a lot of drawing papers. I also encourage you to draw big. Try to use... I, I find that the more of the paper I take up, the the uh, the bigger the paper I use, the better the drawings generally are. I, I even have a scanner that's 11 by 17 just so I can uh, always draw at least this big. Anyhow, let's do it. Skeletor. So I'm going to think about the pose. Skeletor's usually got his Havoc staff and... Uh, I I like to draw him with it a lot, especially if you're looking for a classic pose. I'm going to think about weight distribution. Let's see, I've, so I've got his, this shoulder up. That means this shoulder will be down. That means his hips will probably have a opposite slant if I want him to look like he's standing naturally. I want to be conscious to try to take up as much of the page as I can. So we're get, I'm getting like a, a light gestural drawing. I want to I want to know what Skeletor is doing here. I want to an idea about what each part of his body is doing, and I want to do it fast. I want to know where the bottom of his feet are. Uh, usually, I'll draw the ankles first. So in my head, it's, it's I'm I'm think it, it feels like he's he's coming to the edge of a cliff, and maybe looking out over it, looking out over his dominion. I could have probably drawn this a little bigger even, but this is this will this will work for our purposes today. Uh, and that you know I'm staying light. I want to keep my marks light. I want to accumulate marks, keep my hand moving. I don't want to stop. I want to uh, start with bigger shapes, and then I can start breaking those bigger shapes up into smaller shapes. And I'm thinking about what, what part of the muscles are facing me, what part of the shapes are facing me. Um, get that rib cage in there, know where the stomach muscles are, and they reach down to the crotch area. Again, I, f I feel like, you know, he's not just standing there, he's taking a step, so. I think, I feel like drawing is a lot about asking questions. You know, I, I feel like asking the questions uh, make the drawing better for me. Um, I, I say, you know, what is he doing? And, and you know, if things go well, I get an answer, and they, they generally do. I, I draw him with uh, human feet first, and then I break up his feet later on uh, to get those monster feet in there. I do I do that pretty much with any monstrous characters. I, I try to do the human and then alter it from there because I think it it's the human-like qualities that we're attracted to when we see characters and. So I have him kind of, I'm, I'm thinking about where that wrist is, thinking about uh, what part of the fingers we're going to see as it wraps around, where the knuckles attach to the hand, and then go ahead and get that staff in there right away, okay, and go ahead and get that head in there a little bit. You know what, I, I'm thinking I'd like to give him the power sword. I feel like he's got the power sword. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sketch that in a little bit too because that'll inform me about what his body's doing, where the hilt of that sword comes out. Uh, I don't know. Decisions, decisions. Let's get his hand in there first. Yeah. 
We're gonna have the sour power sword going up. Breaking up the space, breaking up the space. Thinking about the whole form. Hopefully adding a little weight to the figure. One part of the body informs the other part. So to move around the drawing is important. To not be precious with the drawing, be willing to change it. It becomes easier to change things if you don't decide too quickly on which marks are the, the final ones. You know, let it accumulate. Think about your own body when you draw. Try to feel the part of your body in the drawing that you're drawing. If I'm drawing his leg, I'm hopefully be thinking about my leg and feeling feel what your leg feels like when you when you put it down on the paper. I like to draw the heels first and then figure out and then actually I draw the bottom of the feet so I know <laughs> I know what part of the ground is being touched. And that seems to help me out. Okay, so we've we've almost got like his whole humanish body in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the head a little bit. Um, where is the chin according to the sternum? Where are the eyes according to the rest of the head? Right? Here's the middle. Still want to keep it light, you know. I, the, fa the face is always a lot of fun, so I don't want to make, you know, I want to make sure it's it's in a good spot to get all that fun happening. You know, if I need to change it, I want it to be easy. Something I I normally have to do is is scale back that forehead for some reason. I I start off with a bigger shape and I whittle it down. I think about where the ears are even on a skull because it helps me make sure that it's in the correct uh, it's the correct distance from the shoulders get that v-shape in there under the chin where those two cords connect behind the sternum then the rest can come straight down from the ears make sure you got those back muscles in there that actually fit up behind the base of the skull put in the temples flatten back that forehead keeping her light keeping it light <laughs> hopefully y'all saw the uh, the intro part one where I, I went into more detail on the face okay and now if any if anybody is familiar with he-man <laughs> you learned one outfit you learned a lots of outfits because they they like to reuse stuff which I I'm cool with you know, on, in, on Eternia, they all dress in a specific way, and that's to an artist's advantage. However, when I draw Skeletor, I like to go a little old school with the mini comics, and uh, so I I draw the where I can. I try to implement um, the mini comic version of the character, uh, <clears throat> and that that happens to do with his shin guards are a little different in the mini comics. So when we're when we're drawing the figure, we're we're almost done with Skeletor here. I got all the, the major parts happening, so we're gonna be going into the details very soon. Uh, you wanna keep that midline established. You can see these big shapes. If I were to draw some of these shapes in a very basic way, you can see how it's a lot easier. So this would be like the torso. Here's the side of the torso, right here. Here's the front, where's that mid split. The, the bottom. And here's the waist, It'd be like a rectangle. The triangle in the middle. When I'm drawing arms, I'm thinking about tapered cylinders. And what a tapered cylinder looks like is this. It's like a, a tube where one end is smaller than the other. So I'm thinking about that with the arms. The, the shoulders are balls. I'm 
Okay, there's a ball for a shoulder over here. It comes out to the side. So if I know where the bottom part of that muscle is, it's gonna really help me. Okay. See that tapered cylinder happening here. This this arm is you're, we're pretty much just at the side view, so we don't even see the bottoms of those tapered cylinders. But that allows me to say, oh, so I'm seeing the side of the wrist. Here's where the, the bottom of the hand can come up. Here's where the top of the knuckles would be. So now I have that little box shape that can help us make a hand. And thinking about the fingers as a single unit, or actually, I like to split them up into twos. I find it really helps. So there's the bottom two. And then here's the top two. And I'm seeing the bottom part of the underside of the middle finger is really the main thing that's happening there. Here's the, the under part of the top finger it just creeps out, just says, hi everybody. Right, and these things we're seeing, we're seeing, we're not seeing the, the, the very much of the tip of these fingers because they're wrapped around this Havoc staff, which will come up like this, okay. Yeah, you, you take this shape, you break it up. You break it up. You can when you get those collarbones on there, the ends fit at the end where the shoulders begin. And then you can come in, create a dip. Here's where the back of the shoulders will come up and fit into the base of the skull. Okay, so that's the back. Here's the front. You can see how the those cords fit in there into the neck and then sometimes this part shows through if you want to make it look like it's strained or um, scarier because you can see the separation in the muscles and the cords and the ligaments and all that okay so let's finish Skeletor here we've got all the major parts in there so I'm gonna get into the face getting that expression in there, pulling those brows down. I'm asking myself, does it look right? Does it look right? Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to keep those shapes as big as I can, even though there's, you know, this is the smaller part of the picture. I'm thinking about where the, you know, how far are these shapes away from each other? Okay, let's go ahead, reestablish the front of the skull. I'm going to go ahead and just erase the back of the skull since the uh, hood's going on. So I, I do want to see the edge of the top of the hood right there. I'm drawing the, the rim, which will provide, you know, the shape to the head once the hood's on there. The cloth that comes out from underneath wraps around his skull. I'm gonna I'm gonna dip down the front there. It looks better if he's kind of peering out from underneath something. With the hood comes a new shape to the skull, to the head. So now is the point where I can start getting some of those blacks in there. Getting my lines to be a little darker. And it's easier to have confidence if you've already ex done some exploration and and you have a lot of choices to pick from. You know, now now is the time where I can tell myself to be confident. I like to use descriptive words to myself when I'm drawing. I like to say, you know, what do, ask myself, what what do I want to what do I what do I want this to look like? What do I want people to feel when they look at this? 
And, you know, with He-Man and superhero stuff, a lot of the time that answer is beautiful. I want the drawings to look beautiful. I want them to look powerful. With Skeletor, I want to, I definitely want both of those things to come across. Um, you know, and you could say, well, you want them to look evil, you know, and, and you do, <laughs> but it, evil is easy. So I, I steer away from, I, I used to try to make things look evil all the time when I was younger, and I, I uh, that's not hard. So I, I don't focus on the evil parts as much. That, that'll come through easy enough. I'm going to lay that armor over the muscles. I'm thinking about where the end of the armor is, according to the shape of the pectorals here, and where it's going to end up over here. So this is, a, this is like an, an oval shape that comes across him. Go ahead and get the straps. Wrap the straps around his uh, rib cage. Okay. Now we can, he's got the um, loincloth that comes down. I always find it interesting. Draw it in one big shape. You can think about if it's going to hit his leg. You know, and since it's strips of cloth, they're just going to kind of, I I would think, come down and rest on his leg like that sometimes. And then you'll have the the center ones would would overlap it, you know. And I think it looks better when there's a one larger strip in the middle. Now they would hang over this leg because the leg is behind him. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> just. Just draw them all on there. It didn't look right with it folded against his leg, so here we are. We're drawing them all straight. Well, they, you know, they could be kind of stiffer, like leather, too, right? Like um, thick battle leather. That's, that's a question that's good to ask yourself when you're putting on garments to your characters. What is this made out of? You know, how do I want this to look? I'm going to go ahead and give him like a little skull and crossbones on his... I'm pretty sure he, he has a some kind of goat's head shape there. You know, and I... Am I careful to make it look like the original? Yeah, I think people appreciate that when it looks like something that they're familiar with. So I don't try to take too much of uh, liberties when I draw these characters. Um, they're not mine, and I feel like I'm paying tribute to the people that came before me by honoring what those people have done. Uh, I, I like seeing that when other artists do it, so I choose to try to do that as much as I can. Uh, go ahead and get some of that good old Eternian fur happening <laughs> behind the loincloth. You know what? No, I'm taking off the fur. Here's Mr. Rob Changer's mind again. Again, in the, in the uh, mini-comics, he was going... Uh, he was free balling, so I'm gonna draw him free balling here too. So he needs, he's a little, you know, Skeletor's gotta be sexy. Even Skeletor's gotta be sexy, so we'll let him be sexy. All right, so now I'm, I'm finalizing those lines. I'm just gonna kinda, you know, make solid lines Reestablishing shapes. Get down to the uh, feet now. Now I can put in his awesome demon feet. So center of the foot, come out. Find the bottom of that toe, which can you know you can his feet can be a little bit bigger than other people's. I like to make them. I I, I make an attempt to make them feel real. You know even though they're they're creature feet to kind of. As I as I know the the sculptors to the action figures did as well. And I love Skeletor's demon feet. You know, which is why I personally don't feel it necessary to buy the filmation versions to the uh, action figure line because they don't they seem inferior to me. I mean they're they're great and I don't down anybody for buying them. Uh, but if I had to pick and choose, I like the toy versions. I think that when you shade figures that there's there's key spots that um, you can 
especially if you you know you're getting something you want something to look like it's in a normal light there's a there's little shortcuts you can take to drawing uh, the shade or and putting some tone on your characters and one of the ways you can do that is just going for those key spots, putting some shade under his uh, chin. That'll make it pop. Shade underneath the figure. Let's say I'm gonna, yeah. Just an easy thing to do. If he's gonna have uh, metal, that's that's where you can get a lot of uh, shade and underneath the knees sometimes too, not always. Those are things you can almost automatically start off with at least. Um, when you do black for metal shine, you I I will very often leave like a a margin of light. On the other side, it seems to make it look good. You're going to have that little bit of the metal feel. Build up some of those leg muscles. If the light's coming down here, we might see a little shade. Try to get those hatch lines to follow the shape when you can. This was supposed to be a quick drawing, and I guess I just don't do quick drawings. <laughs> it's it's quick for me. I, I tend to spend a, a good amount of time. And Skeletor has got those kind of skin gloves. Whatever you want to make of them. They, they, they look like gloves, but then they didn't really paint them on the figures, so they look like their skin, too. I'm thinking about the sword like I think about anything else. Where's the top to things? Where are the bottom to things? And, you know, start with the big shapes. Start big, break it up. Know where the middle is. And another thing I was thinking to tell you guys is be aware of the borders of your uh, page in a way that they, they tend to affect me a lot. I know that I have to I've had to um, really train myself to ignore the borders of a page because they'll 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 tend to dictate how the drawing looks sometimes. You know, you're aware that you're getting towards the border and that'll make it harder to draw sometimes. So often I'll put a piece of paper under there and just let myself go off the border um, just so that it doesn't change the composition of the piece that I'm doing. That's good for now. Get his emblem in there. I didn't like how the emblem looked on the part one to this, so I'm being extra aware of my placement this time. Simple shapes, thinking about symmetry. Get those awesome shoulder pads now. I think, you know, draw the guys naked first, <laughs> even if they'd end up having a lot of clothes because you need to know where the body or I I think you need to know where the body is a lot of the time I mean there's exceptions to every rule but um I with my own drawing I think it looks better when I know what the body looks like underneath bone border rocking yeah I just love Skeletor I love seeing him seeing him come to life I love thinking about his laugh. He's definitely one of my very, very favorite characters of all time. Get the bat on the uh, armor. Put some uh, finishing touches on the line work here. I want this guy to look ripped, but I don't want to overdo it either. I want I want to suggest shape, you know. I don't I don't want to over describe everything. Let's see, thinking about 
which part of these shapes are not facing the light source? Where can I put um, some hatch marks to make it look fuller? I do think it's important to try to go fast because drawings can take forever, you know? You could spend a lifetime drawing one thing easily, I and mean, anybody who draws often knows what I mean. So, you know, getting things done fast and not thinking, you know, don't think too much, don't, don't judge every line that you make. Make yourself keep going. Don't be afraid to change things, you know? Like I said, keep it light, you know, especially in the beginning because you want to allow yourself to change things and you don't want to be precious with your work. You want your work to be an ever-changing, ever-evolving thing. Let's get this uh, staff arm in there. Always move around the drawing. Always keep going. One part of the drawing affects the next part of the drawing. You want it to look like one thing. And you, you know what? You don't want to get... It's so easy to get trapped in details. So you, it's, it's gotta be like a, a really conscious, well, I don't wanna say conscious, because a lot of the time I do my best drawing when I'm on the phone, but uh, it's gotta be an active thing, that's for sure, I think. Even when the pencil's not on there, when you're, when you're looking at it, you know, you're, you're going through options, and I, th I, I think, at least every every drawing goes through a phase where urgency is necessary, you know? It, it can go through a lot of other kinds of phases too, for sure. And every rule is broken at some point, <laughs> but these are things I think about. And I, I would say that I haven't come to the point yet where urgency is not necessary at all. Otherwise it could take forever, and I have spent forever <laughs> on some uh, works of art. and. You know, I think anybody given enough time can come up with something great. But, you know, how many great things can you do in a lifetime? You know, you, it's got to it's got to get to the point where time is of the essence. That uh I try to draw a cross between something that looks real for the uh goat's head on his staff and then something that's a little uh, more evil or otherworldly. But I'm thinking about the middle of that shape. The, the eye sockets on a goat skull, are, I, if I remember right, they're really on the side. But on Skeletor's staff, they're more stylized, so they, they face more frontwards like a human, if I remember right. But, you know, I, I, I kind of... I like to instill a, a little bit of realism when I can with my work. Get those twisty uh, horns in there. I like to think about where the side of the horn is, you know? And that'll tell me where the back of things are sometimes. I, I shouldn't say side, center. That turns into just a side. You know, and this, I'm not trying to make this a masterpiece. I do want to give you guys something cool to look at, and, you know, so I am trying to do a bit of a good job. Uh, but this is still, it's got to be just considered a sketch. This is just a sketch. And if I, if I were to take this further, I probably would scan it in and start uh, coloring it in Photoshop. We've reached the end of Skeletor. Uh, please let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have any suggestions for characters that you'd like me to do, let me know that. Um, if, we ever, if we get a lot for any particular character, I'll definitely do that. Um, and uh, give me a thumbs up and follow me. Check out my links if you want to see uh, cool stuff you can buy with my artwork on it. Thanks, guys.